Uh, so let's move on to a little bit uh, more uh, drama. And given that you are uh, uh, a lost uh, what, Angelian? What I'm you, an Angelino. Angelino. Third that's generation, right. by the way, which most people cannot say. I'm third generation LA, same neighborhood too. Okay. So. Well, damn. Y'all, y'all were panning for gold, I think. <laughs> <laughs> In the <Literally>. West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I, I, I want to, because we haven't really had anyone to uh, talk about this story, and, mm-hmm. we, and we did mention it uh, when it first came out. So the uh, Angel City Brigade Riot Squad. All of the above. Uh, Just every yeah, there's supporter a, the, group. the yeah. supporters groups of uh, LA Galaxy. There's one more. I got the other name of the other one um but they all they all generally i've from my, from my understanding can never agree on anything like there's no. a lot of just uh sort of infighting and just disagreements with how how to support the club which just happens at every every club Definitely. all the support it's difficult to get you know uh, uh thousands of people to agree on anything right um but this is the one thing that they all seem to be on board with uh and it's as they should <laughs> G, uh, uh, gm or sporting director what's his uh i forgot his role uh, chris klein i believe he is the sporting director or the president he's president. the club president uh gm is actually our head coach's job okay and it always seems to be our head coach's Manny, job which right, is, right. tells you about our front office but <laughs> it, yeah. it's very like mls 1.0 ish a lot of people say so and and um, so uh, LA Galaxy fans, uh, supporters, uh, you you know they were going to essentially boycott the first game, um, yes. uh, the uh, El Tráfico. Uh, that game end, did, did not end up happening. Klein got lucky that the Rose Bowl match was canceled. That's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, LA Galaxy fans are generally pretty upset with what's going on. And given that you are the you know one of the LA Galaxy fans, or at least one of the uh, loudest on the internet, very very proud <laughs> LA Galaxy uh, uh, supporter. Uh, how are you feeling about this whole ordeal right now? It sucks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it, it sucks that this it, it has come to this uh, with the team. I, I fully support what the supporters are doing. I totally understand it. And, you know, it's not at the, any of the players. It's definitely not against Ricky Poosh because we, we love that man. We're not sure. protesting Ricky Poosh, <laughs> by the way, Ricky. We, we ain't protesting you. We love you. Um, but, you know, it, it's tough when you're supposed to be the, the standard of MLS you guys were, or we were for, you know, the first 20 years of the league. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden the shiny new gem comes up across the street and they're doing everything that we should be doing for themselves. And they're doing it better than we ever were able to just because of the current state of MLS and the way the league really helps expansion teams succeed, but they're doing everything right. And we're at the point in LA where the only thing the galaxy have over LAFC is the history and I will always say the Galaxy, um, you know, with their social media numbers, they have the best social media numbers. <laughs> wow. And okay, everybody, let them know. I mean, know. no, I'm just saying facts. You look at that 1.4 million on Instagram and TikTok. It's, that's just it's, that's okay. the, what it is. It and means they have something. The, yeah, yeah. They have the global recognition, which they're losing now, especially with the announcement of LAFC and Bayern's new partnership. That's something that the Galaxy, that should have been a Galaxy partnership. Who has LAFC produced from their academy for Bayern to want? Their, Bayern sees what LAFC is doing on the field and they want to invest in their future which is something that absolutely should have been the galaxy right and and and, and I'll, I'll talk about that point because uh, obviously uh, fc dallas had the relationship with Bayern, yes. and they and they there were several players that either went to train at, at Bayern. um they they um who obviously chris richards went yeah. from fc dallas or went to Bayern, and then is now at crystal palace um so it, when i first saw the news i was like oh damn that's like what's up with fc dallas and they I mean, credit to Bayern. I mean, they, they, they see what L- LAFC is doing. It seems like a good move, um, you know, maybe a, a very helpful to LAFC to as far as development. Mm-hmm. But then from a, you know, commercial perspective, financial perspective, I mean, there's no hotter team than LAFC right now. Yeah. And you also look at what Chris Klein has been able to accomplish in his years as the Galaxy president. Because as there's a video we have on the screen, yeah, yeah. just it, it points it out. I mean... The Galaxy are known for making big signings, but in the past 10 or so years, they've had way more misses than hits on these big name players. Without you talk doubt. about the Dos Santoses, you talk about Stevie G. I mean, these are big names that are great for, for recognition and have helped the Galaxy throughout their run, but you know, they actually have to play well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the Galaxy have just swung and missed on so many of these big names. And then, you know, the Galaxy had a historically bad 2017 season. 
And right after that season, Chris Klein was announced for a five-year extension. Yeah, what? That, that that's what seems uh, a little odd. And I, I look, I, I can only speculate. I don't know if he if his negotiation tactics are similar to the Reynos because I don't understand why. <laughs> why after such poor uh, results uh, that he still keeps getting opportunities. And I remember, I, look, I, I have this photo on my phone. I, yeah. I went to. Um, a game. Uh, one of the when I first started going to uh, MLS matches. Um, oh, when, when Beckham arrived, and when Beckham arrived, I I, I used to go to like Metro Stars games, and then I, ne- I didn't go for years, yeah. and then Beckham came, and then uh, you know my friends are like, "Yo, we gotta go." Mm-hmm. And uh, this is this is a picture <laughs> of uh, I took this photo. This is the this is this in two thousand eight, July nineteenth, two thousand eight. Uh, uh, you see, uh, you see David Beckham. You see Landon Donovan. Edson Buttle. Edson Buttle, and look at Chris Klein right there. Boom. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, I don't know. Nobody can see it uh, other other than Eli. But yeah. it, it's a so he's clearly a guy who's been around for a long time and is uh, has a lot of respect from ownership at at the club. Oh, One thousand percent, and that's the only thing keeping him afloat. It's just it's kind of wild, and it, it's just it's disappointing for it to get to uh, to this point where like. It, it, now it's it's like a standoff with the fans of like yo get rid of this guy or we're not gonna you know uh, s- support the club so i wonder i don't know who's gonna fold i mean somebody ha- i don't know what the compromise is i i hate to say it because i i, I love the fans and i love the supporter group i actually joined acb last year mm-hmm. just no, definitely not a great business decision for me as this week in mls but like personally i just felt like that's where i belong right 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 but i'm scared that you know the fans will fold first which would be like the the more unfortunate scenario here but the the club has already made it clear that they're calling out the supporters bluff and it helps that the Galaxy haven't had a home match yet because we can't actually see this in action yet. Right, We've seen right. it in preseason. People come into the stadium and boycotting. And there's going to be boycotts this weekend at their home match. I forgot who they're playing. I think Vancouver or someone. Um, but it's just very unfortunate how the, the front office's response to this has been, you guys are bluffing, you know? Yeah. Because yeah, is, I, get, I hate yeah. to say it because I love the fans and everything, but you know, the jersey sales haven't gone down. The merch sales haven't gone down. I mean, yeah. I, I, I love, I, I always find it funny where it's like, yeah, we're going to boycott the team after I get the jersey and I get that new reversible <laughs> jacket. Then we're going to boycott. <laughs> um, Once I look fresh, then uh, I'm going to, you know, take a stance. Yeah. And uh, like valid because that reversible jacket is absolutely heat. That, like, that, that, is, <laughs> that is amazing. I think our kit's amazing as well. Um, it's just... You know, I, 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 I'm with the fans here because I want to see that change made and I love the people that I've met in the fandom. I just really hope that they can be very stern with it and not fold at the first offer. You never take the first offer okay. in negotiations, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I know that the Galaxy, whatever that offer is, I haven't been part of those meetings. Um, I know that that first offer is going to be pretty low. And I also don't like hate the club necessarily like the organization for what's going on it is an ownership thing but there's so much greatness that's still happening in the galaxy organization it's just that one specific leech at the top is really really hurting the reputation for everyone else because the marketing team at the galaxy top tier i mean the way that they i'm biased but the way that they work with their influencers and stuff has been amazing the way great. the guests that they're able to bring into so, the stadium uh, uh, Ser- serrano right yeah adam serrano, adam serrano he's, yeah he's great he's a mega master at what he does and i think what he has been able to do with the galaxy on social media has been fantastic it just sucks that everything else in the organization isn't helping them it's making their work harder by mm-hmm. trying to promote this club that is in shambles under the scene uh, it's kind of like you know a duck swimming in water everything looks fine at the top and then under it just like right right <laughs> that's a look I, all they need to do is uh i don't know tell tell ricky Pooj that uh if 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 klein stays he's just gonna continue to be bored in la i don't know what is the <laughs> the, the move um it, it, look it's it's a shame because uh, la galaxy should be on uh and they still sort of are they're on the forefront of like when people think of mls they think of la galaxy first and and then like obviously unbelievable signing i mean ibrahimovic coming to the league i mean uh, uh, one of the hits one of the hits hits, uh, it it is a from a marketing uh perspective it is it's a similar what what uh kind of what you're saying like the that all the work behind the scenes is uh a a lot more rigorous than it seems on the outside but then there's a little bit of like 
it's nice and shiny on the inside, but then when you look at the core, it's just like a, a slightly rotten. And you don't yes. want, uh, you know, it, it, with all, I look, I, I'm I'm a Chicharito fan. I just mm-hmm. want him. I, I, he's just such a good dude. He's just a good man. <laughs> I want him to do well. Uh, I watch him on Twitch. He is he is somebody who is uh, very like. Uh, uh, forthright with his fans he's very honest he's like a vulnerable guy uh, and, and you don't see many athletes like that and he should be playing on a good functional team you know yes. and, you know, and when, when when LA Galaxy were hit with the penalties for uh, yeah. you know I don't know what the uh, for something Chris Klein did. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, I mean, I'm sure that is what le- yeah. leads to being like, all right, uh, he's had enough time at this at this job. Yeah. So are you asking like what happened with the penalty? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the oh, exact yeah. details. So Christian Pavon uh, came right, to the right, Galaxy in 2019 and he originally signed as a TAM player and then he would become a designated player his second season in 2020. But what was happening is a Blaze Matuidi inner Miami situation where he was being paid yeah, under, under the under rug. The table, yeah. And it sucks because Pavone, he was supposed to be like the next generational star for the Galaxy. Obviously, a lot of outside factors ruined that for him, totally. not just yeah, yeah. what happened with the club. But um, that was just such like a big red flag you know that and it shows that this management doesn't know how to to manage the the salary and just the mls roster regulations and it's so frustrating (laughs) when you look at lafc (laughs) and what they're doing (laughs) and how they're able to sign in gareth bale and all these players on on the tam deals we said we were paying pavone Mm -hmm. but then we actually weren't but i feel like lafc actually are like figuring out out these ways i mean they all they do is uh, you know sign the players on a tam deal and then they gave gareth bale just like a set of golf clubs and it's like hey it was just a gift (laughs) hey we done this i think i I had it in my trunk and i Mm -hmm. and i gave it to gareth and Uh, if uh, if just one last thing on LAFC, if LAFC wins the CCL this year, they are on verge, on the verge of becoming the league super club, which is something the Galaxy <laughs> should be. The Galaxy are the league super club, but they're just not doing it. And LAFC, if if LAFC continues their their trajectory right now, they're gonna make MLS a league without parity in a league where there's literally everything that makes it a parody with all the regulations. I, They've just figured it out. I get that. I mean, look, I don't think uh, LAFC are just like, they're, they're like invincible. They, I, they're as a good. Galaxy fan right now, I, that's how I feel about them. <laughs> and I feel like they, I'm just trying to reach up to get to them, which is, it, it actually doesn't bother me as much as people thinks it does uh-huh. because I'm actually, I don't hate LAFC as much as people think. I don't hate any MLS club, but I have to put on a front sure, sometimes. Sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a um, show. It's a <laughs> but um, it's just, it just frustrating because I know that the Galaxy should be up there and in my, you know, LA ab- above everyone else mm-hmm. mindset, it should be LAFC Galaxy 1 and 2 every year in the West. I mean, with the market it is, that's what how it should be, and I would say the same for New York. But you guys, well, you no, we it. have our own issues. Yeah. So yeah. We, <laughs> we, people don't want to <laughs> take the train anywhere; they just go watch soccer. Uh, it, it's a um, yeah. Look, LAFC to me, like it, it, I, I think the, the after I've gone to, uh, I was at the uh, El Tráfico, the the playoff game yep. in twenty nineteen, and um, the, I think the bigger issue is that there's just such a a psychological it's more of a psychological thing when playing LA when playing against LAFC especially for LA Galaxy but it's like you know RSL they don't care I mean, they they beat LAFC in very, very huge games mm-hmm. Damir Krylock doing karate kid kicks or whatever uh, and, and winning big games but they without a doubt especially watching them uh, in the, the CCL match uh, the, the addition of like Denny Buanga and, and just I mean he's 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 gonna win he's MVP. Spe- he's like, spectacular. He is so good. He, he is, is so good. Yeah, he's probably gonna win MLS MVP this year, which should be Ricky Pouge's award. You know, you see, <laughs> it's just a never-ending cycle here. 